Okay, I think we're recording now. All right, so you guys can see the practice test. And you can see number three here. Yeah. And you guys want to know why it's A? Why? So in the kinetic molecular theory, there are the five assumptions. And one of them is that you assume that the size or the volume of the molecules is negligible, like it doesn't play a factor. When in reality, that each molecule does have some volume and that since there is a little bit of volume for every molecule, if you add up the volume from all those molecules, the actual volume would end up being a little bit larger than that predicted by the ideal gas law. Like if you did the calculation, normally you discount the size or the volume of the molecules. But in reality, they're, they're there, which is why the volume is actually larger than, the, than which if you use just the ideal gas law. Does that make some sense? Yeah. Okay. What's another question you guys have? Oh yeah. Um, on free response, how do we um, number one D? How do we know if something like deviates from ideal behavior? If something deviates from, oh, okay, uh, that's a good question. Let me, let me pull that up. Um, oops. Apparently forgot to get my, okay. All right. And uh, let's do a screen share and switch it to the bamboo dock. All right, can you guys see the paper now? All right, let's start a new one actually. Um, okay. Okay, so um, you want to know if it deviates, right? It, you said if it deviates from the ideal behavior, right? Yeah. And so when you're talking about certain molecules, let's say you have H2 and you have O2 and you have CH4, you have NE, okay? The thing about all these is that they're all kind of small and that they're all nonpolar. So the H bonds to the H. The O double bonds to another O, and so there's equal pull all the way around. CH4, okay, and so all of these, and, and neon, the noble gases, especially the small ones, are very nonpolar and, and, and fit the ideal gas law. So all these are, are kind of, are very close to the ideal gas law. But if you have something polar like water, you know, you're getting this, you're getting the, the polar pull, right? This, uh, the positives are being pulled to the, the partial negatives up here and the partial positives are down here. So this is where you get something that deviates because now you have polarity. So you're looking for these molecules. Now we haven't spent a lot of time on that. I'm kind of hoping you guys remember a little bit from um, remember a little bit from Gen Chem. So, but basically, you're, anything that looks like this, these are all. We'll call them the nonpolar. We'll say that they're small, and they fit ideal gas law. But this one right here. Okay, this one is a little, well, it's not that much larger than some of them, but let's say it's larger, it's polar, that's the main thing. Okay, and this one deviates. From the ideal gas law. Okay, so that's the most important part about that. 
So that could show up on multiple choice or free response in the test. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? All right, what other questions might you have? And you guys can always type them in the chat. Like if you, so you guys aren't talking to each other. You can just, so if you guys open up your chat area on the side, you can just type them up there if you have questions and I can see them and address them. Boom, oh, just got here. Hi. Hi, welcome. <laughs> we got a good group going on here. All right, let's see. So we've got Shannon, Brandon, and Marina, and Caitlin, and Julia, and Nick, and Ellery, and Chloe. We got, we got good. We got a good number here. All right. Any questions? Yes. Okay. It says like it tells you like all the rules for it, and then it says the total pressure is nine, and then it says what's the partial pressure, and I just I was confused because it like told them, and then it was like oh what. Okay. Well, let's let me show it on the um on the screen share first, and then I'll do I'll draw it up. So can you see it now? This, this is number eight. Can you guys see it on here? Does it show up? Oh yeah, it's there. Okay. So the 0 0.250 moles of the helium gas, the 0. Uh, 0 0.5 moles of the neon gas, and 0.15 moles of the nitrogen gas. And, and you have all those moles, and then you have a total pressure. And so it wants to know the partial pressure. So I'm going to scoot this off this side a little bit so I can see it and still work on the bamboo tablet. All right. So what we want to do is, um, let's get to a new page. All right. Uh, I like it better when it's blue. Okay. So we have uh, 0.25, 0.5, okay. So we have 0 0.250 moles. And we have 0 0.150 moles. What's the last one again? 0. 0.5. Okay. And so really, it doesn't matter the identity so much of each one of these. It just matters more of how much the total is. So we add those up and we get, we get 0 0.900 moles, right? And the total pressure is zero is 9.0 atmospheres. Now, that's pretty good. But what what really what they're asking for is let's see, they're just asking for helium, actually, aren't they? I'm kind of going off tangent a bit. So just just the helium, and helium was the 0 0.250, right? Yeah. Okay. So. Remember the mole fraction? You have 0 0.250 moles of helium over 0 0.900 moles, which is the total. Okay. Which is our, I represent with a big X. This is our mole fraction for just helium. So remember, mole fraction of whatever your gas is is equal to the moles of your gas over the total moles. And if you want to know the partial pressure of your gas, what you have to do is take the total pressure, man, that's not coming out very well, times the molar fraction of your gas. So that's what we're doing here. So we would take the total, which is 9.0 atmospheres, times the um, mole fraction, which is 0 0.250 moles over 
0 0.900 moles. And, um, and then since we're not using calculator, it's multiple choice. 0.9 going into 9, that's 1 going into 10. 10 times 0.25 is 2.5 okay. atmospheres. So, and that answer is D. So, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And so that was, for those of us that just joined, that was number eight on the multiple choice. Oops. Oh, now you guys can't see anymore. And so that was number eight on the multiple choice. Okay. All right, other questions? Remember, you guys can type them into the chat area and I can see them there. Yeah. Yes. So multiple choice. So I've got number four and 11. Okay. So let me do a screen share on these. Uh, screen share. Okay. So we have number four here and number 11. Okay. 11 is pretty quick. Let's do 11 first and then four will take a little bit longer. So which of the following gases that fuses at twice the rate of XE? And there, there's our choices. So now I'm going to go back to my pad. Okay. So we want to know, and we're talking about effusion. So the rate, and it wants to know the gas that effuses at twice the rate. So the rate of whatever A is over the rate oops, of Xe is equal to the square root of the molar mass of Xe over the square root of the molar mass of whatever A would be. So in this case, since it says twice, then you can say that's two over one is equal to Xe is, so the square root here of 130, what is it, 131 about? So 131 over some number. The square root of whatever this square root of whatever this is right here has to be equal to two, right? So what number? The square root of what number is equal to two? Four. Four. So 131 over x has to be equal to four. So that's four x is equal to 131. So x is equal to 131 over 4. 4 goes into that, what do we say? It's like 30, uh, 111, almost 30, well, almost 33. So which one of those choices is about 33? 0 03 is equal to 48. NF3, let's see, 19, 19 times 3. That's 19 times 3 plus 14. That's probably not it. O2 is equal to 32. So my money's on O2. 
and then CO is equal to uh, 28, right? So I would go with C. So that's number four in the multiple choice. That was number 11. Oh, so sorry. You're right. Number 11. <laughs> number 11 on the multiple choice. Oh, okay. And then let's do four, and then we'll go on to three. Any questions on number 11? No questions on 11? Okay. So, uh, and let's see. Number four, a sample of 0 0.01 moles of oxygen gas is confined at, confined at 127 degrees Celsius and 0.8 atmospheres. What would be the pressure of the sample at 27 degrees uh, Celsius and the same volume? So, let's see. Let's write down the things that we know. So this is obviously a combined gas law, right? P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. So the volume is the same. So it's P1 over T1 equals P2 over V2. And uh, this is we're looking for P2, right? So P2 is equal to P1 T2 over T1. So the 0 0.01 moles doesn't really matter at all. So the P1 is 0 0.80 atmospheres. The T2, we move to Kelvin. So 127 plus 273, is that 400? Oh no, T2. Oh, I'm sorry, 27 plus 273. That's 300, right? 300 Kelvin over the first temperature, which is 400 Kelvin. And so that's basically 3 over 4. And you could say that, um, that uh, well, you could do it however you wanted to. But three fourths of 0.8 would be 0.6, right? Each each fourth is 0.2. So P2 is equal to 0 0.60 atmospheres. So does anyone have a question on that part? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it looks like. Caitlin lost her sound for a second. Oh no, I think we just lost her. All right. And the chat, looking in the chat section. So when she comes back, maybe she'll see that. Okay, so that's number four. Now number three. Oh, that's the one we did at the beginning. Oh, okay, so for those of you that showed up a little bit later, let me um, go back to the first page. Oh, did I? Oh, I didn't do it on the first page, did I? I just talked about it. Uh, this the, the the question three is asking you why it. So when the actual gas volume is larger than predicted, what does the ideal gas law not account for? And it does not account for volume. The kinetic molecular theory does not account for volume. You assume that the volume is negligible compared to the rest of the volume of the sample or the rest of the volume of the container. Um, so you, since you don't account for the volume of the individual molecules, when you predict you get a certain size, but the, the, the molecules actually have volume. And so you get enough of these molecules and it contributes to the overall volume of the, of the container. So when you do the calculations, it's going to be larger than it should. Or larger than you than you calculated. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
All right, so we've done three, four, and 11, and we've done multiple choice number 1D. Um, other questions? Oh, her chat won't work, but she needs one C and D. Okay, is that for the multiple, oh, multiple choice one C, wait. Multiple choice one C? Multiple, uh, multiple choice number one? Oh, free response, okay. Okay, so. All right, I gotcha. Um, I'll do D first because uh, because we talked about that already. Oops, I went right by it, didn't I? Wait, how do I get in there? Okay, there we go. Okay, so this is number one D right here. Uh, all right. Oops. All right, this is number one. So this is free response, number one D. Um, and in this one, just to review real quick, um, the, the molecules are all nonpolar and they're small, like right here the H2, the O2, the CH4, and the NE. And so they're nonpolar, so it's equal poles in opposite directions on each of these. There's no side that has one more electronegative or one more other, um, one more uh, partial positive or partial negative. There's not that going on on these molecules right here. They're small. They're the closest to the ideal gas laws you're going to get for these molecules. But something that is, is asymmetrical, that has polarity, um, is going to be, it's going to deviate because there's going to be attraction and repulsion happening with the molecules. And remember, for the ideal gas law, that's one of the assumptions. You assume that there is no repulsion. You assume there's no attraction. But there is in reality. And um, the more polar the molecule, the larger and more polar, the more it's going to deviate from the ideal behavior. So really, unless it's oxygen bonded to itself, most molecules, if they have oxygen or if they have nitrogen as a central molecule, or I'm sorry, if they have oxygen or nitrogen as a central atom in the molecule, then they are going to have polarity and they're going to deviate from, they're going to deviate from the um, ideal gas law or ideal behavior. Okay, so that's 1D. Uh, let's go, let's take a look at what 1C would be. Okay. Okay, so this is number 1C in the free response. Um, and the question was, calculate the number, of the number of molecules of water vapor in the sample. Well, they told you what the vapor pressure was. There was a table at the top, and they said that... Um, actually, let me erase that for a second. Okay, so they told you that the, uh, the pressure of the H2O, the vapor pressure was 23.8 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so but they want to know the number of moles. So you're going to use the ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, and this time you're just going to use it just for the P of H2O. So, and they want to know N, the number of moles. So N is equal to PV over RT. So what you're going to have is that you have to have the pressure in atmosphere. So you're going to have 238 millimeters of mercury divided by 760 millimeters of mercury because that's going to give you the atmosphere or you know however you want to write that okay then that's the pressure then the volume you're going to have they said it's in 90 milliliters 
and it has to be in liters, so you're gonna have 90.0 milliliters divided by a thousand milliliters. And really, like if you're gonna make this how it's supposed to be 760 millimeters for every one atmosphere, because that's gonna make that uh, have the right unit there. 90 milliliters, a thousand milliliters in one liter over R and T. And R, of course, 0 0.08. Uh, am I doing this right? Am I not remembering? 0 0.0812? Is that R? Why doesn't that sound right to me? Is that right? Hello? 0 0.0821. 0 0.0821? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, liters? Yeah. Liters atmosphere over mole Kelvin. And then the T, uh, what was the temperature they gave they gave us? Um, 298 Kelvin, or they oh the two 25 degrees Celsius. So 25 degrees Celsius plus the 273 makes it 298 Kelvin. And then once you plug all that in, you'll be able to get the moles. The last thing you'll be left with is moles. So, uh, oh, so once you get that, let's see. Uh, so you had to do B in order to get C, or no, you can do straight from C. Okay. Um, so what was it? 1.5198, 1 1.519, 1 oh, stop that. 1.5198. And this is the moles. And then you could just set up your bridge and say for every one mole, there's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And once you multiply that all out, oh, this was, I'm sorry. times 10 to the negative fourth. Sorry, I forgot to put that, that in there. Moles. And once you do all that, then the number of molecules for H2O is equal to, what was it, 6.93 times 10 to the 19th molecules. All right. Okay. Okay, so now um, uh, after we did one C and D, Chloe asked for the tin lab rewrite. Do you want us to indicate that it's a rewrite by putting rewrite in the title? Um, no, you can just uh, uh, just on the sheet on the on the uh, rubric. A regrade. Okay, so uh, on the so Chloe, I'll just put that on the rubric. Amanda, you want to see number two on the multiple choice? Okay. Let's see. Let me let me put this on the the screen share on this one. Uh, Oh, we lost Caitlin again? Okay. So number three says when the actual gas volume is, or no, number two, sorry. Equal masses of three ideal gases, X, Y, and Z, are mixed in a sealed rigid container. If the temperature of the system remains constant, which of the following statements about partial pressure of gas X is correct? Now, the key to this is the fact that it said equal masses. So not moles, but masses. So if they're equal masses, you're probably gonna have different moles of X, Y, and Z. So X, Y, and Z are gonna have different pressures in the container. So 
uh, that means that A is not correct. B, it depends on the intermolecular forces of attraction between molecules of X, Y, and Z. Well, I can see why that could be uh, um, something to talk about, but it says ideal, three different ideal gases. If it says ideal, ideal gases, ideal behaviors don't have any attractions. So that's why it can't be B. C, it depends on the relative molecular masses. And that is the truth because again, we're talking about masses. So we need to know what the number of moles of X, Y, and Z are if we want to know what the partial pressure of X is. So that's definitely true, C is. And then D, it can be calculated with knowledge only of the volume of the container. Obviously not true because you don't know what the you don't know how many moles you have of X, Y, and Z. So the volume of the container does you no good, really. So that's why it's C. Does that make sense, Amanda? Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, I think I got through, oh, and Sneha, did you see it? That's what I meant by when I, it's not on the test, the Van der Waals equation is not on the test. I haven't seen it on the test in a long time. I'm not putting it on my tests. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. Other questions? And we can do other, we can do um, questions that aren't just on the, uh, if, we, if you have it on the worksheets or something too. Hard water lab, we don't have to do the letter thingy. Nope, no letter. Don't do a letter. So just the post sub and then air analysis and discussion of theory. Yes, that would be great. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Are you guys managing okay with getting this stuff done? Yeah, it's kind of a bit like everything is all due at once. True. It would have been nice to space it out a little bit more. I can understand that. It was a bit harder with the labs because I didn't want to have to keep collecting them and grading them and handing them back. Yeah, I get that. How was the practice test overall? most of it. There are only like a couple of questions that I wasn't sure about. Okay. You guys doing okay on the density questions? Going from density to getting the molecular formula? You guys have anything else you can think of? Um, everyone has their mics muted. I'm not sure if they know. Oh. Oh, wait. I see Amanda has a question. For number one C on the free response is 1.49 to the. Is it. Oh. Uh, 1.49 1 1.15. Oh. Five, oh, did I mess up on my... It's possible that I messed up on my... I thought it was... Huh. He says one point... Four more ladder. Mine, mine says 1.5, but maybe, maybe do I need to double check my um, calculations? Did you guys get different numbers for that? Okay, 23.8 divided by 760 times 90 divided by 1, 2, 3, and then divided by 0, 8, 2, 1, and then divided by 298. Oh, I get 1.15. Okay, that's, wait, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't let me unmute it earlier because it said that there's too many people. 
Oh, yeah. that's weird. Yeah, so that's why I got two. That's why we just redid it. I was really confused. Oh, so my key has got a mistake in it. One, five, five. Okay. 1.1519. Oh, I didn't have it had the 1.5198 and it forgot the the one one nine eight. So so that's what uh Okay, good. Alright. It just my key just left out. I, I when I was typing it up, I didn't uh, put the one after the decimal point, so that's why I messed it up there. Now. Okay. That's what I needed help on because I didn't get what you got on the key no matter how many times I did it. So. Well, it's well, you should have been really close though. It wasn't off by a terrible amount, was it? No. Okay. I just was trying to figure out what I did wrong because like, uh -huh. I couldn't figure it out. Okay. Mr. Warner. Yes. So for one A on the free response, it says. Calculate the partial pressure, but it says in tor. Right. Thing, milligrams of mercury. Right. Are we supposed to convert it to tor? Well, yes. Yeah, technically you're supposed to convert it to tor, which, does it change the answer? Yeah, I think so. so no. One millimeter mercury is equal to one tor. Oh, just kidding. That's ATM. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's the same number. Yeah. Yeah, Chloe, that's right. Good. Okay, good. Other questions? I like that you guys are spending a lot of time on this number one in the free response. Even though for some reason my key says 14. For E, do we have to have all those reasons or is just one reason okay? Um... Oh, just giving like one reason would be fine. I don't think it's gonna really matter a ton. Okay. For what? One E. For one E. Wait, who doesn't have an E? Yeah, oh. Mine, have an e oh. D. mine has an E. Whoops, did I not I must not have put it on your guys. Sorry about that. So it's asking you about the oh man, I cannot get this thing to number right. Was it supposed to be on there? Uh, yeah, it should have been on there. That's okay. D on our thing. It's because um, there's no actual D equation, like where you have D on the computer. Oh. Until you answer for C. Got it. That makes sense. Uh, okay. Sorry. So D, yes, D's going to be on there. The, I think that's what you're asking, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense now that the, num the letters are just off. Okay. All right, good. Other questions? Is number five on the free response going to be on the test? Let's take a look. I do not like that one. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, I don't think it's worded like that. Okay. But uh, I think there's something that relates to it a little bit. Let me take a look. There's some that talk about average speed. Um, no, I'm, you know what? I think I must have, have something like it on the retake because I could have sworn I had something like it. I don't think there's anything really, there's nothing like that exactly on the, um, nothing like that exactly on this coming up test tomorrow morning. Could we do three? Uh, this number three on the free response? Uh-huh. Okay. The glass vessel contains 28 grams of nitrogen gas, which is basically one mole because nitrogen is diatomic. Assuming ideal behavior, which of the processes listed below would double the pressure exerted on the walls of the vessel? So if you have one mole of a gas, now the identities of the gas shouldn't matter because you're assuming ideal behavior. 
So if you add enough liquid mercury to fill one half of the container, well, yes, if you have half the volume, then you have double the pressure. And so let me actually, I'm gonna um, open up the, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go back to my uh, bamboo paper. Okay, so what we're dealing with here, uh, hold on a second, sorry. Okay, so you are looking at, so uh, three, whatever the first one is. I've got B on mine. Is it 3B or is it 3A for you guys? 3A. 3A, okay. So um, you're dealing with a P1, V1 equals, oh no, darn it, I did it wrong. Makes sense. Okay. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So if you, um, if you have a pressure of one or whatever, and then your volume is one, and so to make this, now the, the volume is one half, then your pressure has to double to still be equal to one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's why the first one says yes. If for 3B, you increase the temperature by 30 degrees, well, Celsius, that's one thing. But for Kelvin, which is what we do, 30, so 30 degrees Celsius is equal to 30 Kelvin. And the, um, the original, so the original temperature is, um, oops, did I mess that up? The original temperature is 290, no, no, sorry. 303 Kelvin, and we're going to 363 Kelvin. So that doesn't do it, because P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So one over whatever, 303, is equal to whatever that pressure would be over 363. Obviously, you don't have to double it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm taking up too much space for this. All right. So then for the C, 3C, raising the temperature from negative 73 to 127. So that's going from, if your temperature, temperature one is equal to 200 Kelvin and temperature two is 400 Kelvin. So now we're looking at a P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. So P2 is equal to P1 400 over 200, which is basically two. So yes, that is definitely doubling it. And that makes sense? Yeah. All right, and then for D, 28 grams of oxygen gas. Well, oxygen gas is 16. Remember, we have one mole of nitrogen gas already. So 32 grams is equal to one mole of oxygen gas. So that's not quite one mole, so that's not gonna double it. If you double the moles, you're gonna double the pressure because you're doubling the amount of gas. If you add 32 grams, so E, if you're 32 grams of oxygen, yes, that's another mole. So you double the moles, you double the pressure. All right. So that makes sense? Yeah. So it's, so it's E? So on E, when it says adding 32 grams of oxygen gas? Yeah. That was, you got double the, you got another mole. So you doubled the moles. So that, uh, so once you double the number of moles, you've doubled the amount of gas in there, which means you've doubled the pressure. So do we have to write an explanation for each one? Uh, yes. Okay. Because it says explain your answer, and that's a key part. Like sometimes in the AP, they won't give you a point if you if you get like some might say, oh yes, that doubles it, but they're not going to give you a point unless you have the appropriate explanation. 
Other questions? You guys are okay right now, or? Yeah, I just have a mistake that I'm trying to fix on my test. Okay. Well, if you guys don't have any other questions at the moment, I suppose we could wrap up. Um, and I'll be back in the room tomorrow morning pretty early if you come across anything. Okay. Any last question you guys can think of? Not for me. Okay. Well, um, this will be recorded and then obviously won't do very much good necessarily for people who are taking the test tomorrow, unless they're staying up really late tonight, which I hope not. Maybe, maybe it could be for the retake if necessary. But. All right. Well, if that's all, then I hope that you guys get a little bit of rest tonight and that you guys aren't too tired for tomorrow. And then, yeah, just let me come in early. I'll be there if you guys have questions. Okay. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Oh, awkward. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Not awkward. <laughs>